Right now, we get to welcome in one of my favorite people, three-time Pro Bowl tight end, spending 14 seasons, smiley as ever, the Niners, the Titans, co-host of the very important Slips and Picks 500. Delaney, how mm -hmm. is Slips and Picks 500? Uh, it's, you know, we, we haven't started yet, but uh, we <laughs> probably make some changes. I'm excited to see what the next season uh, contains. Let's see what your shirt contains. What do we got? What, what are we rocking here today? Oh, Lord of the Rings. Come oh. on now. Lord of the Rings. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Who is, what, Let's what, go. what do you mean, Lord of the Rings? What is on your T-shirt? The movie? Yeah, Lord of the Rings. It's the it's a actual script from the book. Oh, my gosh. Um, yeah. I always learn something about you. I love the, the, what is it called? The Samarillion? That's the one where it's the el in the Elvish language. I used to read these books when I was in high school. I'm there a nerd. I'm yeah. a nerd, Julie. I don't know if that, that's how you say it, but I remember it um, very well. Okay, there's some news coming in, so we're going to get to that. There, everyone's texting me and going crazy, but I want to talk about the Niners first before we get to the Titans. Coming off another Super Bowl loss, of course. Um, the bounce back's all anybody's talking about. Is there enough... Was enough done that you think that they can just waltz back in and win it this time? Um, I mean, with the free agency and the, and the draft, you know, it's it's telling. I mean, they had a, a great year, like you said, being able to go as far as they did. But in short, on a on a play where I feel like you know everyone was told uh, before the game, and you know, then it happens, and you 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 kind of shoot yourself in the foot when you're not prepared, but uh, this, that's a tough question. I, I think the 49ers have um, the players to contend and go back to it, but you know, it's still, it's still the question is, you know, will they get uh, Brandon back? Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know. That's still out there. Um, so they, they may lose a few guys who got them there, but again, you still got a uh, Christian McCaffrey, uh, Debo, and Kittle. I, so uh, who knows? I, I, you know, I wish that they have. They may have the opportunity to get back there, but I'm I'm just not sure about it. What do they need? What would convince you that they could get back? And and is it a personnel thing? Is it a decision making thing? Is it the rest of the field? What's holding you back from saying absolutely? I mean, because this is the NFL. Every year, you never know what teams are going to be contenders. And I can't, you know, you got the Chiefs. We know they're always up there, but the 49ers has been up there the last few years. But that changes, you know, things happen. Other teams get stronger, play a little better. So it's just tough for me to say, being in this league for a long time, I know it's any given Sunday, anything can happen on Sunday. Uh, but again, like I said, I, I, I wish the 49ers can go back and, and have that year that they have had uh, last year. But again, like I said, I can't, I, I'm not a genie. I can't tell the <laughs> future. <laughs> um, there's a report that Ayuk wants $30 million a year. Should they give it to him? Uh, I mean, if you looked at last year, the things he did, I feel like he was the reason why they were so successful. He made some big-time plays when they really needed it. Um, and he's the type of player that goes out every week, and he's the same. He never have a down. Is he worth 30 k uh, thirty million a year? Uh, you know, that's not for me to say. I'm not a GM. I'm not doing all the stats and comparing them to other players. I do think he's a hell of a player. If he don't get what he wants there, I'm sure he will get it somewhere else. And I, I wish that the best for him on uh, getting the contract that he seeks. You were in San Francisco when Jim Harbaugh got hired, Delaney, back in 2011. Middle of training camp. Everyone says these amazing things about him. Players will come on the show and just say, they're going to go to the AFC championship game. They're going to beat the Chiefs. They're going to, because of Jim Harbaugh, that'll be that, the turnaround will be that crazy. I want to know from you, middle of, you know, and first week of August, they're in training camp. What are these Charger players complaining about most with Jim Harbaugh? <laughs> Complaining about uh -huh. the most, uh, probably not getting breaks um, like other teams. You'll watch other teams go to the movies or go swimming or, you know, like they have some type of team activity outside of football. Right. Well, Jim Harbaugh not doing that. He probably saying, look, while that team is out swimming or going to the movies, we're going to run 70 plays today. You know, we're going to get better today. So uh, there could be some things uh older players are not used to you know getting that break that they need so i can see them guys complaining about that a little bit uh but again it all pays off at the end of the day and i'm sure that's his message 
Yeah, it's just interesting because everyone's just, you know, he's like the, the and there's got to be something. I guess it's working hard. What did he unlock in your game? Uh, Jim Harbaugh and uh, Giro, they unlocked uh, my knowledge of the game. Um, they actually made me understand the game a lot better, uh, meaning the X and O's of the game. Um, if you know my past time with them, I was I played a lot of positions, and that's where the name the mm -hmm. Swiss Army uh, knife came from because they able they they unlocked the cheat code in me pretty much where I can see a defense and know exactly what to do. And uh, I'm thankful for that because, you know, they gave me the ability to be able to understand defenses and, and coverages and be successful in the NFL. So. I mean, I saw the Greg Roman. I can't believe you call him Giro, first of all. I didn't know that that was his <laughs> nickname. But, the, you know, he knows Jim. You played for Giro as well. Um, sell me on the idea that he's more than a run the ball that's what it's, you know, like, sell me on that idea because I have, I have uh, some, some questions because that was, that's sort of his wizardry is running the ball. He gets, he gets a lot out of his quarterbacks, but from a, from a dynamic, there's more layers to him way. What has he got? It is. It's way more layers. With Jim Harbaugh, he's the type of coach that gives us more than one play to go into an offense. So uh, once we break that huddle, we probably have three plays um, that we had called out, and we can change them at the line of scrimmage. Yes, he likes to run the ball. That'll be our first option. But he also gives us the best option to throw the ball, put the quarterback in a better situation mm -hmm. or not giving up big plays. Um, you got to be a run-first offense. I think that opens up all the other plays for us to call with the play action, the drop back. Um, so, again, I just think with him and Greg Roman – uh, together, they just come up with great schemes. Yes, everyone said they like to run the ball. He did that with Michigan. Uh, they had a great running back group that they were able to just pound the ball a lot and then make the big plays when they needed to in the air. And I think that's the same, the similarity that you're going to see uh, with the Chargers. We're, they're going to run the ball. They're going to run the ball. But they're also going to have some plays that come off of it that it's going to have defenses turned around and not knowing what to do. And uh, that's what brings the excitement in his offense. And we'll see what Will Disley, Hayden Hurst at the tight end spot. Maybe they'll become well-rounded tight ends there in the AFC West. Tough division for them. Let's go to the AFC South, my friend. Last time I saw you, you're wearing a Limp Bizkit t-shirt. We're sitting in this stadium in London. It's completely empty before. I think you had just gotten off of a flight. And you and I, I don't know if you remember, we're screaming to an empty stadium, Derek Henry! Give the ball to Derrick Henry! Because we were scratching our heads, like, what, what are we doing? Now there's a new coach, Brian Callahan. There's no Derrick Henry. What do you make of the loss of Derrick Henry with this Tennessee squad? <laughs> very, very tough. When everyone knows, we pound and ground, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We had Derrick Henry. We had the king himself uh, running the ball. And, you know, that makes it, it, makes it very easy um, on an offense when you got a guy back there like Derrick Henry, who you can give the ball to, and he can be explosive and turn the game, the game around at any moment. Uh, but I think the Titans did a great job on trying to, you know, fill that void. Um, Tajay Spears, great running back. We saw what he did with Derrick Henry and how explosive he was. And then bringing in Tony Pollard, I feel like that one-two punch is not going to be a Derrick Henry, but it will be close. They'll be able to run the ball. We'll be able to throw the ball off the backfield. Um, I just think he knows uh, what to do. Brian and, and, and uh, the GM uh, ran up there. They know what to do. And, and I feel like uh, they're going to figure some things out by huh. uh, adding receivers on the outside to help the run game, which we did. All about the run game with you today. I, it starts with the run, run game. I, I tell everybody a great offense is they got to have a great run game. If you can't get four or five yards on, on a run, I mean, you're not going anywhere. I was watching your eyes, watching that footage of Derrick Henry trying to sell me Tennessee without him. What do you even think seeing him in a Ravens uniform? It's crazy. What I, is when this? I first saw, when I first saw him in a Ravens uniform, I'm like, he actually looks bigger. I don't know if it's the, the black and purple, but the man looked he looks crazy in that uniform. I hate to say that. I know all the Titan fans is gonna hate me for saying that, but I'm happy for Derek. He looks great in a in the purple and black. They're gonna be explosive. Maybe it's <laughs> because Lamar looks so lean that it makes Derek Henry look bigger. 
I mean, Derrick Henry just looked big <laughs> in general. He, when he was in the Titans uniform, he just looked like a giant standing next to me. And I'm the tight end. He looked like the tight end. I looked like the running back. So, I mean, it's Derrick Henry. Uh, anywhere he goes, he's going to look like a, a giant. I will say this to Titans fans who were like, ugh, about this whole conversation here. I like what they did. If you look at what they did, new group of receivers – but you have DeAndre Hopkins. You got to be excited about the addition of Calvin Ridley. That's the number one. They made some moves. The question then becomes, and you seem to believe in Brian Callahan, what he can do. He knows what he's doing. They're on the ball, blah, blah, blah. Will Levis, you've seen a bit. Is Will Levis the dude? Does he get the Delaney Walker, like, check of approval? Of course. Of course, Mr. Mayonnaise himself. Yes, <laughs> Definitely. Uh, no, I feel like what he did last year was was phenomenal just to come in there and uh, play very well, um, show guys that he's tough, he want to win games. Uh, he, he'll put his body on the line just to get a W. And, you know, you want to see that out of your quarterback. We don't want him to get hurt. You got to calm down a little bit this year. We need you for every game. Uh, but I like what I've seen. You know, we think that Will is our franchise quarterback, we need players to help him out, and I feel like we did that. We put, we added so many guys on the outside that can make plays down the field. It's exciting. I just think with Will is excited about this situation. Having some guys he can just throw the ball up to, they can make plays for him. I think that's big. I think he's our guy. I'm excited to see what he do this year. Again, we just got to keep him healthy. Um, I wanted to, before we let you go, and I like your optimism about Will Levis and the stamp of approval. That was emphatic, and we like to hear it. And I do like Ridley, and I think DeAndre Hopkins could do a, a bit of a resurgence there with a different quarterback in a different environment. Last week, we got to talk about this. You helped get the Smart Heart Act bill signed into law in the state of Tennessee. What is that? Why does it matter? Um, so, so I'm going to say why first, why does it matter is because, you know, today's society, we have a lot of kids um, in any sport that's not just football um, tend to have cardiac arrest or have heart issues. And uh, we're not having having a proper, properly trained uh, staff on hand or having an equipment on hand to save these kids life. Um, and with this Smart Heart Act, we're going to do that. In mm -hmm. the state of Tennessee, every school will get an AED CPR training. And it will be 100 or uh, I want to say 50 yards from every uh, football field, um, gymnasium, classrooms, uh, where these teachers or these staff members will have the proper training, which the state of Tennessee will provide for them so they can save lives because um, time, it does matter in these situations. So we want to be able to give them everything in their hand. Uh, so they can be able to do that um, properly, make sure that, you know, we save our kids' lives that's out there trying to, you know, play a sport mm -hmm. or just even walking around class. Um, anything that, you know, can cause a kid to have a cardiac arrest, we just want to make sure they have the proper training and the equipment um, to save lives. It surprised me when I was looking this over that that wasn't already a thing. And I think that's, I mean, it requires high schools to have a defibrillator near where kids are engaged in sports activities. Uh, that seems like something that should have always been in place. And I, as always, appreciate you leading the charge and just making uh, any little bit of a community in the world a better place. And I mean that, Delaney, you're the best. Oh, well, thank you. You're the best. 14 seasons in the NFL. <laughs> Big time Will Levis fan, Mr. Mayo, Delaney Walker. Uh, we will talk to you soon with another T-shirt. Awesome. <laughs>